Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Beyond the Walls, an inclusive and affirming community of Christ ministry. The theme suggested for this Sunday from International Headquarters is called outside our boundaries. Boundary crossing is something very familiar to all of you who are joining me here. Each Sunday, this ministry extends not simply beyond the walls of the sanctuary here at Toronto Center Place or to our city's limits, our provincial and even our national boundaries. Each week, we transcend the boundaries of language to build together a truly global congregation. Since the beginning of the pandemic last year, disciples and seekers from 92 different nations from all the world's inhabited continents have engaged a bond beyond the walls service. This year alone, we've received ministry in 40 different languages. Some 12,500 individuals are subscribed to our YouTube channel, Center Place TV. And our many videos there have been viewed more than 1.5 million times. These are remarkable numbers, but they haven't been accomplished simply by those of us here within the walls. This year, 275 individuals have served either as on-screen ministers or behind-the-scenes support for our services. Another 125 individuals have shared their voice with the Beyond the Walls Choir, which has recorded 127 different hymns which are used in services across our denomination and beyond. All of you are responsible for building up this intentional, inclusive community. And as we begin our service today and make ourselves ready to share in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, I wanted to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to each of you. We are called to proclaim Jesus Christ and to promote communities of joy, hope, love, and peace. This boundary crossing global congregation is founded on love. Your response to the call has given me joy and also hope for the future. Hope that our many efforts can be combined to truly be agents of Christ's peace in the world. With that sentiment in our hearts, let us welcome the Spirit in our midst as we set this shared time apart for the sacred. And we'll do that by beginning with our call to worship for which we go live to El Dorado, Kansas and welcome Cecilia Hausman. Welcome, Cecilia. Hi, John. It's great to be here today. Our call to worship this day is taken from the book of Ruth, chapter 1 verse 16. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Amen. Thank you. And now I invite you all to join with the Beyond the Walls Choir in singing our opening hymn, number 574, Touch Me, Lord, with Thy Spirit Eternal. Touch me, Lord. 
Lovely, thank you. I want to thank everyone who shares their voice each week with the Beyond the Walls Choir for this moving and uplifting ministry. And now we go live to Vancouver, Washington, where Lori Sharp will offer our invocation. Lori, we're so happy to have you back on Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John. It's good to be here. Please pray with me. Holy, holy God, we offer our praises to you, creator of all we see, hear, touch, and so much more. You are present in all the ways we experience life and our lives are made rich by your abundant, everlasting love. For all your goodness, we are humbly grateful. Here we are, Lord, your children, from many places on this beautiful globe, seeking your nurturing presence within this hour, within the sacrament we will share, and within our longing to be your many hands and feet in the communities we each call home. Yet, even now, there are ways that life is, for so many, too much. Too much disease, too much political unrest, too much destruction of our precious natural world. Fear and anxiety can bloom and grow in times like these. We give this pain and worry up into your capable hands that we might be present for the healing that can come when we seek fellowship together, to gather courage for the ways each of us will be called to do what we are able to bring your presence near as we live your love in our daily walk. So as we contemplate your presence in this time of worship, help us to open wide our perceptions of you within ourselves, setting us free, free to live each day in wonder and awe, free to live the beauty of the gospel's good news, free to welcome the affirmation that all life is sacred, each one a beloved child of God. We come in reverence and joy, Holy One, the giver of life, our hope and salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Mike. Now I'm very pleased and we'll go to St. George, Utah. My friend Sean Matheson is here to share a peace lesson. Sean, we're so happy to have you with us and Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John, so much. For today's peace lesson, I would like to talk about my life's journey with racism. I have been a lifelong member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the LDS or Mormon Church, an institution which until recently I had, reviewed, had revered as sacred. I am a seeker and I am investigating the community of Christ to become my church home. And I love what I feel here. My faith journey is consistent with the theme of today's service of being called outside of our boundaries. I feel God calling me into the compassionate beauty of community of Christ. If there are fellow LDS seekers listening, I would love to speak with you. A few years ago, I began to ask God to expand my heart. As I studied LDS church history, I began to see the prohibitions of blacks from the priesthood for what it was, a man-made doctrine which Brigham Young set forth in 1852 in Salt Lake City and was ended by the LDS church in 1978. As I asked God to touch my heart for understanding, I contrasted Brigham Young's strong words on race to what is said in the scriptures. In 2 Nephi, we read that all are alike unto God, black and white, male and female. By God's light, my heart recognized the opinions of an 1852 man, in contrast to the true principle in that beautiful scripture. 
As a second experience I've had with racism, when I was nine years old, my family participated in the LDS Mormon Social Services Indian Placement Residential Program. We had a same aged boy, John John, from the Navajo Nation in Arizona placed into our home to live with us. John John was scared. We fought and he was subsequently placed into three more Mormon homes in nine months. Uh, it was only a couple of years ago that I began to ask God to expand my faith journey. In that process, I began to recognize the LDS Mormon Church sponsored Indian placement program for its pernicious effects and for the likely intentions the program had of cultural re-education and religious indoctrination. I have tried to imagine how I would have felt if I were John John, a scared nine-year-old being taken away from my family, culture, and all that I knew, placed into four homes in nine months. I can't imagine the fright, the panic he felt as he was forced away from his family, culture, and all that he knew and loved. I now see that past Indian placement residential program of the Utah Mormon Church as forced assimilation, intended to re-educate and reacculturate and to religiously convert Lamanite children. And I know that other churches and governments were involved in the same type of Indian schools and Indian placement programs. I now view the very categorical umbrella word Lamanite as inappropriate. First Nations people should be known by their own Aboriginal people's names, Navajo, Seneca, Seminole, Cherokee, Crow, Blackfoot, Inuit, Cree, Huron, Iroquois, Algonquin. Resources could have been brought by churches and government to First Nations people instead of separating children from parents. The intentions and harmful effects of those programs are now so clear to me in retrospect. A vital lesson to learn from the Indian placement and Indian school programs is that good people were blind then to the destructive nature of these schools and foster placements. My parents were involved with this and they are not bad people, but my family nonetheless participated in this church program. I wonder what blind spots do we now have that decades from now our children will look back on us with more clarity and say, what were they thinking? In past times, Scriptures have been used to miss, to justify everything from slavery to forced displacement of First Nations peoples to Indian schools and Indian foster programs. Uh, DNC 163-7C provides us with this sage guidance. It is not pleasing to God when any passage of scripture is used to diminish or oppress races, genders, or classes of human beings. Much physical and emotional violence has been done to some of God's beloved children through the misuse of scripture. I cry now when I think about John John. I've asked God to heal John John and his family and to forgive my family and the church I attended for so many years. I don't know where John John is now, but I have felt spiritually close to him in this God touched process of recognizing and healing. It has been enlightening for me to finally fully recognize the racism in my life that stemmed from what I was taught, justification of priesthood prohibition, and experienced Indian placement program when I was young. But what is so much harder for me to recognize are the lingering legacy effects in my default way of thinking. As I pray about how to recognize my blind spots and flawed legacy ways of thinking, the beautiful Christian song comes to mind. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. In my faith journey, I've noticed that it is only when we allow God to touch our hearts that our eyes can truly see. Will you pray with me? Loving God of light and healing, please heal those whom we have harmed in racism even by our casual disconcern. 
and those harmed by our institutions. And please expand our self understandings to recognize the harmful legacy effects of racism still lingering in our hearts and our ways of thinking. Lord, by your grace, by the Holy Cross, which your son Jesus Christ lovingly bore, and by your Holy Spirit of peace, please touch our hearts to recognize what you need us to understand. And then Lord, please help us to see through the eyes of our heart. We give our hearts to you, dear Lord, in Jesus name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Sean. Our scripture readings today bring examples of people going outside their tribal, national, religious boundaries. Imagine Ruth, the morning of the day she declared, where you go, I will go. I like to think that she woke up that day and said something like, God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me, God. Be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. During the service, I invite you to be fully awake in order to notice whether the Spirit is already leading you to cross a boundary or encouraging you to try something new so that you may become a blessing of God's love and peace in your community, in your congregation, in your family. So what is that boundary that the Spirit wants you to cross? What is this new thing that the Spirit is encouraging you to try? If it feels right, I invite you to share it with us, with the global congregation, on the chat windows, on Facebook, on YouTube, and you can also send us an email at info at centerplace.ca. ¿Cuál es ese límite que el Espíritu quiere que cruces hoy? ¿Qué cosa nueva el Espíritu te invita a probar? Quelle est la limite que l'Esprit veut que vous franchissiez aujourd'hui? Quelle nouvelle chose l'Esprit vous invite-t-il à essayer? Si cela vous semble bon aujourd'hui, partagez-le avec la Congrégation mondiale sur le chat de Facebook ou YouTube. Merci pour ce ministère. Gracias pour ce ministerio. Thank you for that ministry. And as always, thank you for coming together as a global congregation beyond the walls, beyond a lot of boundaries. I thank you for clicking like. I thank you for especially for sharing this video because that way you're inviting someone to Christ today. That way you're drawing the circle wide for that ministry that you do every Sunday. I thank you. Por ese ministerio, como siempre, te doy las gracias. Por ese ministerio, je vous remercie. Thank you, Leandro. Thank you, Mike. And now we go live to Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, where Bill Mines will teach our lesson of the living church. Bill, welcome back to Beyond the Walls. Thank you, John. Greetings, everyone. Our lesson of the living church today is God calling us for the healing of creation. As a child of a farmer, we spent much time preparing, planning, and caring for the soil and then the crops. We were reminded each day of the miracles of God's creation. The farm had a creek that meandered through the woods, supplying for the foliage and all the animals living there. 
The cattle drank from it and we swam in it as kids. We were shown every day how working together and caring for the things we had helped us to see God's miracles coming to life. God was meeting our needs. God as spirit travels with us, drawing us ever toward the dream of a healed and holy creation. Peace, beauty, wholeness, and justice for all beings. God as spirit inhabits the humanity of Jesus so that we can see the life pattern, the redemptive possibilities we are invited to embody. Jesus seemed to know the healing of creation sought after by God is linked with the knitting together of the physical and the spiritual. This faithful embodiment of the goodness, love, and beauty of the spirit in physical form and act. All beings and bodies are sacred, beloved, and invited into community with their creator and one another. Jesus speaks, acts, and lives so the body and the spirit, the heart and the mind, relationship and community are shaped and integrated by the spirit's loving presence. The vision of God is the reign of justice, beauty, harmony, and wholeness throughout creation by the spirit-driven passion of the Christ. If we truly want to follow the way of Jesus, we have to live into the relationship between our spirits and the bodies. As he did, we have to do it in a life centered in God's compassion and presence. With our whole selves, we trust to make it so in flesh and in blood, word and deed, healing and preparation. As we learn about the living church, we seek to further Christ's mission in the world. We invite you to contribute to the work at seaofchrist.org slash give or at centerplace.ca slash donate. Would you pray for me, pray with me on our offerings? Lord, we come humbly now to share in the offering, not just of our monies, but also of our time and most importantly, ourselves. Help us to be ever mindful of your call to be supportive in our love and witness. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. And now we go live to Clarksville, Indiana, where Wanda Mercer will read today's lectionary scripture. Hello, Wanda. Hi, John. I'm so blessed to be here today. Our reading today is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. 
he took him aside privately away from the crowd and put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened. His tongue was released and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Thank you. And now we go live to Cardiff, Wales, where Apostle Richard James will give today's sermon. Richard, thank you so much for being with us on Beyond the Walls. Dear Convoy, John. Bonjour, buenos dias, good morning, good morning, good evening, wherever you are today. It is really good to be with you. It is not fair. Why do they do this to me? Why do they always do this to us? Don't they understand? There is good news today. If you are feeling unheard, excluded, or feeling unloved, there is good news. If you are poor and cannot feed yourself or your family, there is good news. If you are feeling isolated, or you feel that you cannot love or forgive others or yourself, there is good news. God is doing something about it. God has seen your tears, heard your prayers, and felt your heart break. God is on your side and is doing something about it. If you are looking for something to do to make a difference, there is good news. God, the source of our being, is not one that solves all our problems but invites everyone to do their part and create possibilities to end needless suffering. There is good news for you today. Over the past 12 months, how many national borders have you crossed? For me, just one, from Wales to England. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, my travel has been severely restricted. However, due to social media like this, I have been crossing international borders daily. And how many societal borders have you crossed? Which side of the border do you live on? Which side of the border do you want to live on? Mission starts with encounter. An encounter with the divine can change our understanding. Maybe we have domesticated Jesus and made the gospel ineffective. To follow Jesus, the peaceful one, means that we need to reclaim the radical Jesus who is not domesticated and tamed. And today we will be taking communion together. This sacred sacrament is dangerous. Yes, it is dangerous because it is life changing. It is life giving. We choose another way to live. We show our willingness to not only see another way to live, but that we live that life. We choose to follow the way of Jesus, the peaceful one. And this involves commitment to see each other as a person of equal worth and to act tirelessly 
where barriers between people are constructed. To be following Jesus, the peaceful one, keeps us on the prophetic edge. Today's scripture text is an interesting one. It seems as if there are just two stories thrown together about a woman who had a sick child and a man who is deaf. And both are healed. Do the stories show a different kind of Jesus to what we are used to seeing? Do we see a more human one and less of the divine Jesus? To help us understand some of the context of the time that this text was written, sickness and infirmities isolated people from society and from religious practices. We see Jesus crossing a border from his Jewish side into the Gentile one. Here we see Jesus as the stranger. He is now the outsider. In the first story, we see him meet a woman from Tyre region, modern day Lebanon. Typically, the woman is anonymous, of little value, as a sick child of even less worth. She is impure, her nation, ancient enemies of Israel, and she's living outside the law of Moses. She has a sick daughter, and out of desperation, she breaks so many cultural boundaries to speak to the male stranger. We may say that the outsider meets the outsider. Jesus' response is somewhat odd for us to hear. Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. To the desperate woman, this was insulting, calling her and her people dogs. Was this an ethnic slur from Jesus? Huh? Maybe the term dogs was referring to a nation as people who were scavenging off their Jewish neighbors. She comes back to Jesus and says, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus heals her daughter, who was not present, as she was at home. Some commentators suggest that in this story, the writer of Mark is showing us the human Jesus. And through his interaction with the woman, she helps him to see his wider role of ministry and not just being for the Jewish nation. Is the story to remind us that we need to become a stranger to understand how others live and together we find a better way to live peacefully? Do we need to cross boundaries? to really see and understand another person? How can we walk in someone else's shoes and see life from their perspective? What can we learn from each other? The second story sees Jesus moving on from the region of Tyre to other Gentile areas. The route laid out in this text is a bit circular and doesn't make any sense. Maybe it is just to say that Jesus was moving in and around this Gentile area. We read of a deaf man who was brought to Jesus to be healed. And after Jesus had taken him aside, he was able to speak. Despite Jesus asking that they do not tell anyone about this miraculous act. In line with this gospel writer's style, the others, the stranger, the demon, the nobody, the enemy, 
know who Jesus is, and they cannot stop telling everyone. We should not be surprised to see the ethnic tensions that were evident in the first century still exist today. Some of our current problems are rooted in gender dynamics, which existed in an ancient patriarchal culture. Is this a boundary that we are called to go outside? In Europe, where I live, peace and justice are important issues to be addressed. Whilst these are not unique just to Europe, they are important missional imperatives for us. For in their welfare resides your welfare. So in Europe, we are seeing an increase in nationalism with a rise in fascism in some nations. Racism is creating division between people. Immigration is creating tensions among nations. A once strong European Union is being questioned as to its future as each nation's response to the COVID-19 pandemic is seen as my nation first. And then we have the economic implications. There is homelessness, people trafficking, and poverty is rising in all countries where the rich and poor divide is getting bigger. There is gender and pay inequality. Sexism is rife and people are saying that they are spiritual but not religious and they are not wanting to engage with organized religion that has failed them. Sadly, as we see a rise in nationalism, racism, and xenophobia. Many of these ideologies are promoted by Christians. If we are to follow Jesus, the peaceful one, then these are positions we cannot support. Jesus was about the worth of every person, and he worked to tear down the borders between people. He challenged the systems and authorities that upheld these values. In Europe, as we have been discerning where God is at work, and as we have listened to the voices crying out for justice and peace, we've engaged with spiritual refugees, people whose previous faith journey has caused stress and woundedness. It is wonderful to see healing happening as we are experimenting with new ways of creating safe and sacred communities in person and online. People are being drawn to our vision of peace and nonviolence. Mission is happening and it is changing lives. My good friend, Apostle Bunda Chibwe, tells this story of a village in Africa. The people in this village had never lived outside it. They were happy with the way that life was. Then one day, two of their young people decided to go to the next village. Here, they experienced life in a new way. At times they reveled in the new experience, but soon they did things that brought dishonor to their village. Their actions betrayed their heritage and traditions. Over time, these two young people got very sick and needed to return to the village. Many people in the village were not happy that they were going to return because of the hurt that they had caused to people 
by the things that they had said and done. However, they did return to the village. And unfortunately, because of their illness, they died. Their death caused a great dilemma for the village. Normally, when people died, they were taken to the traditional burial area, which was just outside the village. However, because of the bad things that these two young people had done, they did not want to bury them in this area. Eventually, the agreement was made that they would bury them just outside the traditional burial area. However, during the night, the young people came and moved the fence so that where the two young people were going to be buried was now within the traditional burial area. Yes, the young people came and moved the fence. The two young people were now included. So what fences do we need to move so that people can be included? Or what fences do we need to tear down that are causing division between people? so that all people can be included again. Which side of the fence are you on? There is hope for you if you feel that life is treating you unfairly. The fence or the barrier or the boundaries are being moved or removed. God is at work. The kingdom of God or the peaceful reign of God, does not play by our rules. God breaks into life in the most unexpected places and most unexpected ways. God is doing something, and we need to pay attention. The divine way does not fit our normal human boundaries, and something new is being birthed right now. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Where are you hearing the marginal voices? What are they saying? Who is speaking truth to power? Let us discern together. Let us be Christ-like and help to restore people to wholeness in body, mind and spirit, to self, God, others and creation. When we encounter the divine with the marginalized, the poor, the excluded, we will learn what it means to be the stranger, what it means to be voiceless and to feel excluded. And we will learn to give ourselves to change in our world. The peaceful reign of God awaits us. Let us awaken, risk and bless. Whenever Jesus healed people, he healed not only their body, but their relationship with the community. He restored wholeness. What healing do you need? Do we need reminding that God's table is large enough for everyone to sit around and to be fed and watered? Do we need reminding that we are connected one to another and to our environment? Do we need to be reminded in our world where there are refugees and people are starving that God, the eternal creator, weeps for the poor, displaced, mistreated, and diseased of the world because of their unnecessary suffering. Such conditions are not God's will. Open your ears to hear the pleadings of mothers and fathers in all nations 
who desperately seek a future of hope for their children. Do not turn away from them, for in their welfare resides your welfare. Do we need reminding that there is another way to live? Our communion today is that reminder. It is a reminder that we are choosing to follow Jesus, the peaceful one, the radical one. We are choosing to be spiritually formed into an authentic and living expression of the life, sacrifice, resurrection, and continuing presence of Christ in community. We do it together. We remember Christ's death and resurrection. We remember Jesus, who was called outside his boundaries. We too must be ready to move from our comfort areas and to cross borders that are causing division between people. As Dr. Martin Luther King said, there can be no justice without peace, and there can be no peace without justice. As disciples of Jesus, we choose to passionately work for justice so that peace may be a reality here on earth. The one who created humankind grieves at the shameful divisions within the human family. A prophetic people must work tirelessly to tear down walls of separation and to build bridges of understanding. Taking this communion today together is dangerous. It is dangerous because it is life changing. It is life giving. We choose another way to live. We show our willingness to not only see another way to live, but to live that life. We choose to follow the way of Jesus, the peaceful one. Let us cross boundaries. Let us move fences. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you to participate with me in the sacrament. In Community of Christ, the Lord's Supper is a sacrament in which we remember the life, death, and living presence of Jesus Christ. Through partaking of the emblems, we renew the covenant we made through baptism, reconcile and strengthen relationships, and commit ourselves to Christ's mission in the world. Others may have different or added understandings within their faith traditions. We invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so as an expression of the love and peace of Jesus Christ in whose name we worship. All are welcome at Christ's table. If you're joining us live from beyond the walls and have emblems prepared in your location, we invite you to partake alongside the disciples gathered here. If you're watching the service recorded, we do ask that you wait to participate until you can be with us live. And now, I invite you to kneel with the congregation facing the emblems in your location as we go live to Tahiti, where Puna Tenio will read the blessing on the bread. Bonjour to Puna. Bonjour John, sing bénédiction d'être là avec tout le monde. Prière de bénédiction du pain. Ô oh Dieu, Père éternel, nous te demandons au nom de ton Fils Jésus-Christ de bénir et de sanctifier ce pain pour les âmes de tous ceux qui vont en prendre, afin qu'ils le mangent en souvenir du corps de ton Fils et qu'ils te témoignent, ô oh Dieu, Père éternel, qu'ils veulent prendre sur eux le nom de ton Fils et toujours se souvenir de lui et garder ses commandements qu'il leur a donnés, afin qu'ils aient toujours son esprit avec eux. Amen.
Once again, in as much as you're able, I invite you to kneel facing the emblems in your location as we go live to Riverside, Missouri, where Vicki Thatcher will read the blessing on the wine. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who receive it, that they may drink in remembrance of the blood of your son, which was shed for them, that they may witness to you, O God, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank everyone who has made this service possible. Our technology team, Mary Jean Belrose, Lee Mitchell, Troy Roach. I want to thank our translation team. I want to thank Leandro for all that he does for leading the choir, translation, video direction. Jerry Dale Jr. and Sean Matheson, the producers of our Beyond the Wall service, to Roger Dodson, who serves as the chaplain to our ministers meeting, and of course to Mike Karpowitz for his amazing ministry of music and also all the work on the audio. Uh, this Tuesday at eight o'clock Eastern, I'm gonna be giving a lecture on the Gospels of Jesus' childhood. After the nativity stories in Matthew and Luke, the canonical Gospels have precious little to say about the life of Jesus between his birth and the beginning of his public ministry as an adult. The infancy Gospel of James and the infancy Gospel of Thomas, which is different from the sayings Gospel of Thomas, attempt to fill in some of those details with kind of mixed results. Uh, although both texts were left out of the New Testament, their narratives have had a significant influence on Christian tradition and also on doctrine. And, and there's even episodes from these apocryphal sources which have found their way into the Quran. So we will review both those texts in the light of our sources as we ponder the lost years, as they're sometimes called, of Jesus' life. And now as we conclude, I invite you to join with the Beyond the Walls Choir in singing our closing hymn, number 606, All Are Called.
Well, that was lovely. Once again, I want to thank the choir. We also want to thank our friend Danny Belrose, who wrote the lyrics of that marvelous hymn. As you go forth, go with the verses uh, two through four of the 96th Psalm. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For, the, for great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to re be revered above all gods. Amen. Well, I'll invite you to stay with us after the postlude as I check in with our ministers.
Thanks, everyone. Hi, Mike. Or, hi, Leandro. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> And thanks to all of you. It's wonderful to see all of your faces here together. And I really appreciate um, the ministry you've shared this day with our global congregation. What a very, very special service. Um, I guess I'd like to, I guess we'll start with Cecilia because you didn't have a very long scripture to um, read, but it's one of my favorite, it's taken from one of my favorite, maybe my, my favorite book in the entire Old Testament. Um, and so I'd love to just even touch on that theme. Oh, okay. Well, I'd I love guess. that you touched on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like it too. I mean, it was pretty, it was easy to read because most of it I had memorized already. So it wasn't that hard <laughs> to do. And it's even a song that it gets played a lot at weddings. I've actually played it for a wedding before myself. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a really nice verse. I like it. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about uh, your congregation in Kansas? You know, I don't know anything about our congregation in Kansas because I was attending the Miami, Oklahoma congregation until it shut down in March of 2020 for COVID. And then I moved here in June of 2020. And as far as I know, it nothing's opened up around here. We are in one of the, well, <sighs> Oklahoma is one of the hottest spots and Kansas is close behind and Missouri. I, I live in the reddest part of the country in so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. I remember you told us that story when you were on in December. Yeah, and I, so and, I, and I now I remember, and it's now been this in much more time. It's already been another whole happy year and you still don't have it. <laughs> so anyway, I am glad then that you're able to be with us. I am too. I really enjoy it every Sunday. <laughs> well, thank you so very, very much. Wanda, I want to say hi to you and and welcome you to Beyond the Walls. And we're so happy you've been a supporter of Beyond the Walls for a whole long time. And we got to visit with you in the social hour one time. And I thought, well, she can if she can be on the social hour. She can come and read scriptures on Beyond the Walls. I wasn't able to find it again. Uh, I, I've been looking in um, Thursday nights. And by the time I finally find how you get there, I'm too late. So I have to up my tech skills. <laughs> well, we'll send, we'll figure out, we'll send you the link. Um, uh, if, uh, yeah, you gave me your email address, so I will be able to, I will email it to you and then you'll just have it and it's a permanent link. So, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for being here and how, how uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your congregation in Indiana? Uh, well, my congregation actually, actually is across the river in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm uh, across the Ohio river from Louisville uh -huh. and, uh, I live in Indiana and I worked in Kentucky. I churched in Kentucky. And so it's just a bridge. It's just a river. But um, the congregation, um, uh, uh, the last time I visited in person was the Sunday just before my 80th birthday. Oh. And they had planned an 80th celebration and that service was canceled. And we were locked down. They opened up maybe the next summer uh, when things cool off around here a little bit and had in-person church every uh, first and third Sundays and uh, very strict uh, compliance of coming in one door only, wearing a mask, social distance, no singing, no uh, fellowship congregating except the outside. And then everyone got in their cars and left. Yeah. And they didn't even get to do the normal eating together and sharing. So right. um, they are they are still uh, uh, continuing to hold in service uh, uh, in in person services yet. But I have not attended since uh, early March 2020 when it when it shut down. And uh, so in June of 2021, so a year and a half, um, I had a heart attack and um, I had had a replacement valve earlier and that um, replacement valve began to fail with that heart attack. It, checked, it, it attacked that. So in June, I spent two weeks in the hospital and had a miracle because I had what is called the TABR, T-B-A-R, T-A-B-R, and I think that's a trans-aortic 
valve replacement where they go up from the groin up through the uh, artery into the heart and with that valve and insert it inside the other valve and then expanded it and cut off all the leaks and repaired the damage. Oh my goodness. So then I spent four weeks in rehab and now I have moved to a, a um, independent living apartment and uh, I'm getting three days a week rehab here, uh, physical therapy. And so I am, I am so much improved from even March of 2020. Yeah. And, uh, so you look great. I'm you sound great. I am so happy to hear all of that. Um, that what a blessing to that that you were able to receive that, and then also that it's gone so well. Clearly. Well, when I stayed home that Sunday on my birthday, I got on Facebook, and lo and behold, I found Beyond the Walls, and I've been <laughs> with you ever been with you ever since. So I am blessed. Oh well, thank you so much, and thank you for blessing us with your ministry here today. Thank you. I also want to thank Lori for being back with us and for sharing with us um, your, uh, your marvelous prayer and inspiring prayer, which set the tone for the service today. Um, I think you have a real gift of praying, and we really appreciate that you, um, you know, anyway, that you shared that with us today. John, could you keep your microphone on mute while Lori and our participants are speaking? I think we're getting yeah. some technical difficulties. I will, yes, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you. It was, I was blessed to be asked to share. And yes, I love to pray. So I, I, uh, my daughter, one of my daughters does like to bother me with the fact that, oh goodness, an evangelist praying, it could go on forever. And so, <laughs> And yes, so uh, I was given instruction about how many words and how many minutes, and I was able to comply. So yes, for those who don't like to hear it go on forever, it was it was okay, I guess. Yeah, but I do, I love to be in God's presence and to express the ways that I feel blessed and, and receive um, all of that love in the world. I'm grateful. Well, thank you so much. It was really, it was really wonderful and uh, wonderful for us. And I know that that's something that um, our, our, uh, maybe all of the people who simply watch us are, are, are not, uh, and who haven't actually been on, um, are not aware of. But we do, um, we do try to do John, a, it. Is, a, sorry, you know, I, where, where my... sorry, John. I'm sorry to interrupt. It is your microphone that is causing a lot of interference. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you want to maybe just turn the other microphone on and it will, let's use a house microphone to... You, oh, you're... okay, wait a second. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, one second. I'll figure this out. Sorry. Hopefully we're not going to cause any echoes or anything. It's a little quiet, but maybe can, can we hear you again? Does this microphone work or not? Oh yeah, that, that works, that works. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with my, my system. We always have the fun of technical <laughs> uh, issues. I was just simply saying, we do try to uh, mindful, be mindful of everyone's time and to have the service last about an hour. And it's not always easy because we have such gifted ministers and it's actually much more difficult to uh, be concise than it is to um, just speak. Um, Bill, I want to thank you for your uh, testimony today and your sharing of our Living Church lesson uh, and to um, give us, I think, a perspective that we sometimes lack when, when we are so far removed from things like seasons and, our, and growing food and these kind of things, you know, and, and it's harder for us to uh, be aware of uh, in God's sacred time when we are so far removed from even just uh, the life cycle of our food and our soil. John, let's go outside our boundaries. Why don't you come and sit here because we can't hear you. Yeah, let's come. Move to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this is this is great. This is actually we had rehearsed this moment, believe it or not. <laughs> so this is um, 
a teaching that we have prepared for all of you. There's John. The center place is tiny, the so it takes no time. Are you wearing your mic? No. Okay, well, um, where is your microphone? Uh, well, it's in the other room. So okay, yeah, I can, you can give you mine. I can give you mine. Here. All right, can you hear me? Yes. All right. So I'm going to have to come down here. You're going to do this, or I'm going to have to take your stool, too. <laughs> Bill, I was just saying that when we're removed from, uh, we're, not, we're not living on the farm. So many of us are living uh, isolated from where our crops are coming from, that that isolates us from uh, even the divine cycle of, and circles in, of life. And so I was very struck with the imagery of your lesson today. Well, thank you, John. Uh, you know, being on the farm and then actually staying there till I was 32, I can still remember that going to the woods to pray or being in a field and recognizing God's gift in so many ways, not just the crop that was growing or the vegetables, but the spirit that they came with. And that was God in, at hand. And um, my grandmother was always a great believer in saying, be thankful in all things, for all things will thank you. And I really believe that's true when we think about it in our in our lives. And so I think uh, we have blessings beyond blessings that we haven't even touched on yet. And they're waiting for us to recognize them and take them and use them in our lives. And I just feel very blessed to be part of the service today, but also to hear all of the words that others had to say, for I was touched by all of them. And then when we sang the closing hymn, I could barely sing because I was ready to cry because that, that song says to me so much about who we are and what we want to become. And um, I just love those words. And uh, it's just my privilege now to be part of the congregation here. And um, I love it. And I can't wait for Sunday to come and Thursday to come and any other day that something's going on. My, <laughs> family that I talked to on the phone say to me, you ever do anything but church? I said, well, around that I do, but you know, <laughs> I, I just love all that it's bringing into my life that I can share with others. And that's my, well, my blessing. Been such so. an amazing blessing for us that you've <clears throat> been able to uh, transfer your membership and be a part of this congregation. The ministry that you provide in terms of phone ministry is so absolutely vital, especially right now where we're in this place of isolation. So being able to have, where I have these Zoom meetings, but being able to have the one on one conversation uh, is in, on the phone and everything like that is just life saving at these times. Well, I like talking on the phone, so that's not a problem for me. So <laughs> very, and, very uh, good. it's such a good way to get to know others and to hear their story and to help them find where they're going. And sometimes they help me find a better path that I'm on, too. So it's a it's a blessing for, for all both of us in any case. Very, very good. Um, I, I'll say hi to Vicki. Vicki, you, um, you just filled in at the last minute here and to do what our blessing, and we're so happy to have you always on call and able to uh, provide ministry even on short notice. And um, I wonder if, uh, you, you, in responding to the theme, you, didn't, you weren't uh, one of the ministers who'd been thinking about it ahead of time, but I wonder if, um, if the theme of being called out beyond your boundaries resonates with you. Yes, it definitely does. Am I unmuted? I can't tell. Yes, you're, you're, I can yes. hear you. Okay. Yes, it, it really definitely does. Um, I've always felt like, even as a child, that I was like walking to the beat of a different drummer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the most part now in my life, even being a part of Beyond the Walls has taken me outside of my boundaries and um, learning to write sermons out, learning to write anything, prayers or anything out has been outside of my boundaries. 
And right now I'm feeling called to go even further outside of my boundaries. Um, I've been praying and asking God to open the doors because so far they're not open. But if he wants me to go there, I have concern for all the Afghan refugees coming into our country. And I know Kansas City is going to get some. And I really, really want to find a way to step out of who I am and figure out how I can help with that process here. Mm -hmm. How wonderful. Yeah, uh, I'm, this is something obviously that's on, I mean, has been on all of our minds as uh, we're watching, you know, just horrible TV images and these sorts of things. And, and so the idea of being called to actually personally help in that way is amazing. So you'll have to keep us informed on how, how that progresses. I will. Thank you. So I'm going to um, ask Leandro to, why don't you go and get my microphone so that I can talk to Puna in a second. And that way you'll have my microphone. Mm -hmm. And so it's in the other room. And so, and then Thank I'm going to turn this way and keep talking to other people, but I'm just getting ready for the future. <laughs> and in the meantime, I want to say hi to Sean. <laughs> Sean, thank you so thank much you. Um, for, uh, that, frankly, be, uh, sharing um, vulnerably, you know, in all of this, some of some personal, some very personal things and some, you're, as you were exploring all of this, uh, it was very moving to me. Um, I just think of, and frankly, my own background growing up uh, Mormon and with ancestry that goes all the way back to the founding of Utah and knowing, for example, that I have a great, great, great grandfather who's, um, whose obituary says he was a great Indian fighter and therefore was participating in the genocide that accompanied uh, the settlement there by the pioneers. And um, it's just very much things that we tend to paper over or ignore or we, you know, because we have the privilege to do so. Yeah. You know, speaking of great, great grandfathers, um, I guess it was common that uh, a man would have an Indian wife, a First Nations wife. And in Oklahoma, my great, great grandfather, I believe it was Stevenson, uh, had an Indian wife and put her away uh, mm -hmm. when he made his trek westward. And I, I, I apologize if any family is listening to this and I'm messing up the story. Um, but I think in all of our ancestry, we, we can find this, uh, this troubling thing of racism. And uh, certainly just within my lifetime, as I've asked God to open my heart to see my blind spots that's when I saw uh, the prohibition of blacks from the priesthood and the Indian school placement program so clearly for what they were. And in some ways it's embarrassing that it, it took me so long, I'm in my mid forties uh, to see that. But I also know that God touches our hearts as we ask and at different times. Um, and so I, I felt that enlightenment in my life and uh, I, I thank God for that. Well, I mean, I think that part of all we can all do is be aware, uh, like you say, that we all are suffering from blind spots and that, in that we just need to have the you know, discipline of stepping back from them, of uh, challenging our own certitude that we know that we're right about things. And if we um, follow the path of the peaceable one, that was a path that also includes humility. Um, where we can realize we don't always know these things. And even if the stories aren't always uh, things that we want to learn about or want to, um, uh, we would love everything if everything in the past was something that's just a celebration. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's important for us to be truthful, to uh, approach them with integrity, to repent, and also to see how um, how there's ongoing injustice that results from that, that we can somehow work to address and make the world better. Yeah, definitely. And it's, I, I thank God for that recognition and, and the healing and the continued blind spots that I'm finding in my life. Thank you so much. I want to also say hi to Puna, if I can. Do you have the microphone now? Oui, oui. oui. Bonjour, Bonjour, Puna. Puna. <laughs> and so Bonjour. Leandro will translate. Um, I have heard that because of the COVID now in Tahiti, uh, that the government or the TV stations uh, are going to be transmitting all of the church services on TV. And that I wonder, is this including 
Community of Christ are you seeing your our own church on your TV? Yeah, so actually there's yesterday the the government has called all the the, uh, all the faith communities in French Polynesia uh, and they have once again you know they came together and they have done like together they have uh, uh, they have prayed uh, I, I guess that we can say that's going outside our, our boundaries uh, for uh, just figuring out um, what is the the future um, it, during this new time of pandemic. And Puna, vous avez dit que c'était un jeune de tous ensemble. De toute la Polynésie. Ah. On a appelé à ce que toute la Polynésie euh, jeune. Ouais. Jeune depuis euh, samedi soir jusqu'à tout à l'heure à midi. So everyone has passed it from yesterday until. Uh, jusqu'à aujourd'hui? Jusqu'à midi, oui. Jusqu'à midi aujourd'hui. So everyone uh, has been fasting uh, like as, as a way of coming together in this time of, of difficulty. Mm. Well, well, we are so grateful that you've come together with us at this time yes. to share with us uh, how, as this is going on. And Polynesia will continue to be in our prayers and the prayers of our whole global congregation as you are, are coming through this uh, time of heightened uh, hotspot and, and cases there. Merci. Je voulais aussi ajouter uh, pour remercier notre messager uh, lorsqu'il a dit uh, quand on est pauvre, c'est une bonne nouvelle. Quand on est exclu, eh, oui, exclu, c'est une bonne nouvelle. Et là, la limite chez nous, je parle de cette maladie qui, euh, qui prend euh, une dizaine de personnes par jour, voire 17 à 20 personnes euh, qui meurent par jour. Et euh, dois-je dire que c'est une bonne nouvelle? Euh, j'ai entendu encore et que j'ai la foi lorsqu'il dit mais c'est à ce moment-là que Dieu est tout près de nous. Lorsqu'on lorsqu arrive à cette limite-là, Dieu est avec vous, nous. Pouvez-vous répéter, euh, Pouna, que Dieu est... Et avec nous. C'est à ce moment-là, lorsqu'on se retrouve à la fin de notre limite, que Dieu est avec nous. Que Dieu entre avec nous. Tu comprends ce que je veux dire? Oui, oui, oui. Merci, Puna. So, Puna wants to especially thank uh, our speaker today, Richard, for this message uh, that comes at a time where you know, so many people are suffering, so many people are dying. Um, and this is indeed good news that in the midst of all this, you have just showed us that that God is with us, that God is among us, even in this moment. And that is good news. So, quelque chose comme ça, Puna? Oui, 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 c'est ça. Euh, là, en ce moment, on est à 500, 500 personnes de, qui sont parties. Qui sont parties euh, dans la communauté. On, est, on a dépassé les dizaines de personnes de la communauté, même aujourd'hui, ce matin. On avait euh, oui. oh, sont les victimes de Covid dans la Polynésie française. 
Yeah, so 500 people have already, uh, we have lost in, in French Polynesia to this mm. disease. Mm. Et ça continue. And that continues. Well, thank you. But there's Mer good news. Merci. Thank you again. And, oui, and Richard. Merci pour vos prières. And Richard, also thank you for bringing that message of hope. We're we're all in this again. Where we I, there was a hope, I think, a couple months ago that in some places anyway that there had been a, a threshold crossed. We're back to the place where for folks in the U.S. there's 1,500 deaths a day again, which is a, just a horrible number. Um, we were we were planning uh, this month that I was going to come and visit you in uh, Britain and be part of the Sunstone UK conference that you're having later this uh, month. And that ended up being something that we didn't feel comfortable at a certain point in doing. But we are so happy that uh, we were going to introduce that idea with you on the service today. And it's going to be a little different since, uh, uh, for me anyway, I'm going to be there uh, virtually again. Um, but we are so blessed to have you here with us today. Well, thank you. It has been really good to be with everybody again. Uh, this is my third service that I was in Christchurch, New Zealand, early this morning. Um, I also went in person for my first experience for 18 months. <laughs> uh, that's the impact of COVID. And so I went to uh, Pentega, Pentega Congregation. I know on a global basis here. So I think that's the wonder and beauty of where we're at. Uh, it's, it's a new normal we are finding, a new rhythm. So yes, John, you could have been in the UK. There are some increasing rates to the variants. Yeah. Vaccination rates are really high. That's so you wonderful, know, in yeah. In Wales, where I live, 70% uh, of the whole population is vaccinated. If you take up, just look at the adult population, you're well into the high 80s. So the rates aren't, uh, are much better. But it is, we will need to live with this. This is not over. It's going to be around for a number of years. Yes. Um, so. Yes, unfortunately, we're seeing that now. I think everyone, um, there was a moment when we kind of thought, we finally are rounding this corner. The corner will be rounded eventually, but yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, well, I'm so happy to hear that you were able to have an in-person meeting in your, in your congregation locally. And it's also really- Yes, yeah. yeah. Did, were you doing the same kind of things that uh, Wanda had been talking about in terms of, you know, you have taking some kind of limitations with it or are things progressed well enough because you're all vaccinated that you were feeling a little more able to do things? Uh, now, each congregation needs to put a plan together to be approved by the Mission Centre President and myself as the Peter Apostle. Yes. Um, that there are, what we are encouraging is mask wearing. So the service I was in today, everybody wore masks. And when we sing, we have masks. Uh -huh. um, we were, have a screen projection of songs and, and backing music, some from beyond the wall of choir. It's been very much a blessing to the whole church. And um, with communion, just social distancing, we the cake did the building, um, and then we chatted outside. So yeah, it was not normal, and yeah. but it was it was really good to be together in person. Um, I'm a tactile person; I just love hugging people and touching people. But we didn't even do that. It's just yeah. one of those things, just to be mindful of interaction with people. But uh, just elbow bumps and whatever. Uh, some contact. We we had a um, just me locally with uh, Landro and Mike and I and with went to, got together on the side of a hill in a park here in the city, uh, where it's a, it's a just across the highway from where we live, uh, where there's you can see like the sunset and you can see the whole skyline behind. And so it's a beautiful place to just have kind of like set out a picnic and things like that. And we went with friends, uh, which we hadn't done this in a year and hadn't seen them since before the pandemic. I hadn't seen them since before the pandemic, and 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 remembering to. Only only do the you know the the elbow bump is the hardest thing. We ended up hugging, and then we're like, oh wait, we're not supposed to do that, you know, <laughs> you know. And so it's just gonna because, like you say, we're naturally uh, we naturally hugging people, and uh, and so and so even even as when you normally are trying to be the best of precautions, and one of our friends is even a nurse, you know. Anyway, and yet nevertheless we. Uh, anyway, so we had a kind of a, a lapse there with one hug, but anyway, <laughs> hopefully it'll be all right. <laughs> so. Yes. But, you know, in the message today, I just tried to show this idea that there is good news. Yes. Good news in the gospel. And there's hope because that's at the heart of this. This is inspiring people and realizing that God has not abandoned us. God is with us. 
And um, I, I, th I think it's wonderful that we're able to engage in things like this that just help people to deal with the challenges. And I just also look, you know, I had COVID. I'm thankful I had really, really mild symptoms. Mm. But as we know, people have sadly had suffered gravely yes. with this. Yes. And I also feel for those nations where they haven't got the vaccination or the mitigations in place. Yes. And I do really feel for our global family. As I do as well. And we thank you so much for that message of hope. And I agree with you that a silver, silver lining that we've had amid all of this has been the ability that we've had and actually to build with this is something that we didn't have, frankly, two years ago. And having built uh, this way to connect in intentional, inclusive, sacred community, I think has been such a, an amazing thing for all of us. And also what you mentioned, the fact that so many of us are going to church multiple times every Sunday <laughs> is also, I think, a new and unusual and wonderful and welcome, welcome thing. Yeah. yeah, if I look for my field context, you know, what we have now is that we have a number of English language, but we have Dutch, German, Spanish, French, uh, Ukrainian, regular groups happening. Oh, wonderful. You know, and it's wonderful to see the community being shaped and formed, and it's global. People are reaching, uh, and people are finding community of Christ that didn't know about us before, and they're able to communicate in their own language. And that really is the barriers being, being crossed. Just the, it's given us a taste of possibilities. Absolutely. Well, once again, everyone, I want to thank everyone for your ministry today, for being with us. Um, this has just been amazing. And uh, I guess we can just all wave and say goodbye, everyone. <laughs> and thanks again. I'll let you take back over the driver's seat as we're... <laughs> thank you. Bye, everyone.